crazy. <laughs> I mean, that's the shit nightmares are made of. Right. You know, I wouldn't be able to sleep after that. <laughs> I almost died. Well, no, not really. He couldn't swallow you. Don't tell me fucking that. I was in its mouth. <laughs> it was right. not like a SpongeBob cartoon. Right, right. You know, I couldn't light a fire in there if I wanted to. <laughs> That's crazy. That is. It's fucking nuts. <laughs> like, I read that article and I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so that, that was that. That was a little bit of the crazy news. And then, then there's this. Brian Fuller, who is a highly regarded writer, mm. he, he's been involved with, you know, he, he was the creator of Hannibal, mm. uh, Pushing Daisies, Dead Like Me, uh, <laughs> Gods. I, I believe he also was, uh, I think he wrote the pilot for Star Trek Discovery. Okay. Um, he is going to make his motion picture directing debut. Okay. With a remake of Christine. <laughs> Why? So, Fuller will direct the Christine reboot for Sony Pictures and and Blumhouse. Uh-huh. Um. Fuller will also write the adaptation, first published in 1983. Christine was previously adapted into a film directed by John Carpenter that same year. Mm. Um, let's, uh, that would make his directorial debut, blah, blah, blah. Jason Blum is producing for Blumhouse with Vincent, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So, published in 1983, Christine was Stephen King's eighth novel, and if I'm being honest, it's not one of his best. In mm-hmm. fact, it's kind of a mess. And there are multiple narrators, and the story is all over the place. Um, but Carpenter, the Carpenter movie, uh, it was published a John Carpenter movie adaptation at the big screen. Carpenter himself said that he only made the movie because he needed a job. After the box office disappointment of The Thing... But it's pretty damn good. It's stylish and greatly improves the book. I'm usually the res- author of this for Slash Film. States, I'm usually resistant to the idea of anyone trying to cover the same ground with John Carpenter because why even bother? Nobody does it better. But I'm also a big fan of Fuller. I'm very curious to see what he does with this specific material. If Fuller makes Christine half as wild and innovative as Hannibal, we're in- going to be in for something special. So... Like right off the bat, like I, I, I heard you say, why even bother? <laughs> and I kind of in agreement. Like I let you know, it does I was like shocked that this was being done. I don't know. You liked Christine, I didn't. So I didn't like Christine. Well, I, I kind of agree with the author. Like, I think the, the book was a bit of a mess. Yeah. But I, I thought, you know, Carpenter made a, a, a pretty good movie. Um, I think if you put anybody in the else in the main in the lead role of that kid, I think it'd have been all right. I think yeah. it skated by. But that kid, I, I can't stand that kid. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. I couldn't stand him in Billy Jean. I couldn't stand him in Back to School. I, I, I can't stand yeah. the actor. No, I, I get that. You're, and you're right. I, I, I mean, you know. I'm not going to say he was perfect in the in the part, but you put any other actor in there, Christine might have been able to have been pulled off. But yeah, he's just he's just not a good actor. Yeah, to me, I mean, yeah. some people may love him, I don't know, but not I. Yeah. <clears throat> so I mean, so based upon that, like, so you know, because of the the poor choice of lead actor. In, in Carpenter's movie, which, you know, shocking to hear you poo-poo a Carpenter movie. I know. I just, Christine just was not good. Yeah. Um, I have no idea the, who I would want to be in that position. Right. 
like I get that. Like I mean, it's it's a it like you know, it's a hard. I guess the thing becomes this, like, I mean, you're, if you're rebooting this, are you going to change the car? No, I don't think you can change. You could, you could not. Change I don't it. think you can either. But they did it with B. I mean, like, oh, but like, okay, the in the transform, I mean, that's a completely different scenario for two reasons. One, I mean, we're, we're talking about fucking. What's his name is the director who wouldn't, wouldn't know how to use a Volkswagen. Like he needed, he needed a Camaro, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, know I, mean, I get it. I'm just saying that I guarantee you they're going to change the car. I don't think so. I mean, I'll be honest. If, if, if they change the car, cause like, think, think of it this way. Like that car is iconic. Like you, you believe a car like that. It's a 57 Chevy, right? It's a 57 Chevy, yeah. yeah. Like, the 57 Chevy is iconic. Yeah. The fins, like, the way it looks, everything about a 57 Chevy, it screams I- iconism. So let, let's say you're going to say to yourself, okay, we're going to set this in modern day, and we're going to go back 30 years and uh, use a car from 30 years ago, kind of like they, you know, King did, you know what? You went twenty. You went back twenty five years. <laughs> you know, you go back twenty five years. There's not a car from the fucking nineties that's anywhere near iconic. No, I agree. Like there's nothing out. You would sit there and say, like it ha- the fifty seven Chevy makes sense because like the scenes where she repairs herself, like the metal reforming and everything. That 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 makes fucking sense. Like you can't do that. Like with you know. A 95 Impala. <laughs> right. You know. No, I get it. I'm, I'm just know, telling you they're going to change the car. I just, I just don't see how you could change the car to something from the from the 90s. No, I, I hear you. Ba- based, or even the, the, there's no car that's that, 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 that's been made in that time period. Like, from like Mm, I don't know about that. When you start getting into the muscle car area. <laughs> so what? You're you're so what is it? It's like, it's like a a two thousand Dodge Charger or no? No, what I'm saying is like you said there hasn't been an iconic car since the fifty seven Chevy, and I was like, I don't no. know. When you start getting into the muscle cars, the Roadrunners, the sixty nine right. Camaro, okay, no, no, I, I, but I was I was gonna say from like 1980. Huh, no. Like, no, you're right. Like I mean, in the 70s, the 60s and the 70s, when the muscle car came to be, I mean, you know. But also, I don't want to see like you know, I don't want Christine to be like you know, a 77 Pontiac Trans Am bandit style. <laughs> right. You know, that wouldn't make any sense <laughs> either. Right. You know, like. Like, on all honesty, like if they the change car, the car, the only car that I can possibly see them doing with it from the '80s and '90s is possibly the Corvette. But that's the only car that I can see them doing something like that too. If they change Just, the if they change the car, I'll shit all over this movie. <laughs> I will have, I, if, they change, if they change the car, I will have no problem shitting all over this movie. I, I that'll see it either way. But yeah. I mean, I'm just saying that I bet they change the car, yeah. and the only car that I can see from that, if they were going into the 80s and 90s, the only car that I can see them doing is possibly either a Corvette or a Firebird. I mean, that's the only th- cars that I can think of that are have any kind of iconic. You know, look. 1983 Trans Am kit style. Yeah. That's awful. I know, but I mean, like, you think of those cars back then, there was only a couple cars that really stood out big time. It wasn't a 1987 Maxima, I can tell you that much. No, no. (laughs) You know what I mean? So you're going to go into the Corvette and Firebird and... 
you know what I mean? That air, that kind when of. Did, when did they stop making Firebirds though? <sighs> like, because like, I mean, Pontiac kind of went away, like in the nineties. Yeah. I I don't. Know. And I mean, Chevy like GM transitioned like. The Camaro became their muscle car of choice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even think Ford had a muscle car. In the muscle type car. I'm not going to say a muscle car. But that kind of iconic looking car. Yeah, well, I mean, like, in the Mus- 80s, they so completely changed a Mustang. Yeah. Like, it was still a fast car, but it was, it was a piece of shit fast car. Yeah, the Ford Cobra. But again, like I mean, yeah, that, that was a, an '80s or, Mustang that was like just garbage. The Cobra GT. Yeah. It was still. Mm. A, uh, yeah. I don't know. Look, I, look, I'll say this: one. I don't see Carroll Shelby going back. Like, I don't remember Carroll Shelby doing much of anything with those Mustangs. Shelby Mustangs pretty quick though. Yeah, but he wasn't doing much with those those '80s versions. Oh. Yeah. Is my point? Like, I mean, even he was just like. These are fiberglass pieces of shit. Remember Cobra? (laughs) What, the Sylvester Stallone movie? Yeah. Oh, that's great. (laughs) You're the disease. I'm the cure. (laughs) Right. Oh. (laughs) Classic. Classic Stallone. Yeah. Who knows, dude? I'm telling you, they're going to change that car. I would be shocked. I think if you put that car into time and space, in time and place, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It may, but it makes more sense to restore an old. Even now, it makes more sense. Like if you could find, like the shell of a '57 Chevy, like. Those still sell for big money. Like a, like a, a, a junked out 57 Chevy sells for big money. So if you, you get a kid who like finds one on some dude's farm and like buys it for 20 bucks, you know, yeah. like it, that makes more sense to it. Like, like where a kid would be like taking the time to restore that. Yeah. Then it would, you know, I found an 85 DeLorean. <laughs> The cocaine's still good. <laughs> right. Dude, DeLorean parts sell for... Ex- dude. Oh, yeah. I think I, I think I saw a rear view mirror. No, uh, like a side mirror for sale one time on eBay for like $2,500. Sick. It's the most overrated car ever. <laughs> it handled like a fucking brick. But it's the movie that made it... Yeah. The collector's... Just because it was in that fucking movie. Yeah. It, it, but, like, it handles like a Thank fucking God it brick. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that Florian was in that movie. It just made sense. Yeah. I mean, I get it. Like, I'm not... But, like, it's just... It's funny because it's like we, we... As a culture... Not me personally, but as a culture, we like, oh, the DeLorean was so fucking cool. It was a piece of shit car. It handled like a brick. It had zero acceleration. Yeah, it was a garbage car. It was a garbage car. I'm not going to deny that. Yeah, but it's like we, as a as a society, like as a pop culture society, we like worship those things. And, and so because of that, you're right, like, you know, like a side mirror goes for 2500 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> You know, sick. It is. <laughs> it's funny. I mean, you know what? It's the same thing with like the like the seventy seven Trans Am's a piece of shit too. Like it was fast. It was straight line fast, but like it didn't handle well. <laughs> you know. Oh, I mean, Pontiac's I answer, Pontiac's answer in the eighties was the Fiero. Yeah, yeah, that, that was exactly it. Yeah, because because the 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 problem. 